Well, hello there, it's Wayne Robson again. Um, what we're going to do in this one, I do apologise for having a bit of a sore throat, so if I cough a lot, you'll know why. <clears throat> um, I've already covered how to deal with anamorphic footage by using the reformat node. However, there is another way, uh, which may prove uh, easier if you have a lot of passes. Now, this is only in one pass. It's a single PNG done ye about, what, two, three, four years ago. Um, as I mentioned, for the what was going to be a series of shorts, but um, I never got round to it because suddenly I was working a lot and some of the companies I was working for would rather I didn't work on other stuff. So it got mothballed. Well, I still have all the motion capture stuff for the other episodes, just haven't really done the models for them. So anyway, uh, how else can you do it? It's fairly short, this, but first of all, I want to shut, shut everything down off this um, so you can see the, the raw pass, as it were. Now, I'll just quickly play this through so you can see it's fully animated, as you know. There's it. The teeth is a bit of a problem with this, but, you know, it's just, bear in mind it was done in about, what, about two hours. I think it's not bad. It fits. But anyway, let's find a more flattering frame. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Right. So, um, to point out what I'm doing, first of all, before we get to the reformat stuff, there's a grade node. I've cooled it down a bit. Because cooler stuff, sometimes like that, works a bit better. It's the old thing, make things blue, you know, the blue and teal thing. However, I decided to make this a bit bluer just because it was that um, fluorescent. Now, also, what I have here is another grade node. Now, that is just for the eyes. This is an old trick. Um, what you do is you create with your roto node um, a shape, which we've covered in the roto node uh, video. And you animate it around some basic keyframes, so if a bit, a bit of fall off on it, then pump that in as a mask, so that that is only affecting the area you want. And the lot of letterbox around the eyes is something that's used a lot, you'll have seen it. If you watch some of the really old um, making of videos on uh, colour grading for Lord of the Rings, it was happening all over the place and you probably never noticed. Now, I do have another mask here, um, which in this case, is basically just blurring stuff that is not the eyes. So it's very subtle because the blur is 2.2. When I zoom in here a lot, you may be able to see it a bit better. So you can see that it just softens everything that's not the eyes, keeps the eyes nice and sharp. And at the bottom, there's another defocus, which I'll just go in like this. And that one is set at 2.2 goes in. Um, because I didn't have a, a Z depth pass because I was an idiot at the time and forgot to do it. so. And it's just very, very, very subtle, right? So if I go there, switch it on, it's very subtle. I could probably take that down a bit more to about there because even the sharpest lens is not perfectly sharp and it can make things a bit more forgiving. Now, you could uh, add some film grain to this if you wanted. We'll cover that in a different video. So, okay, we have this coming in. This time, just go straight to your read node, okay? Now, this is great, as I say, if you're shuffling out loads of passes. Now, if you're shuffling out uh, stuff, then it's easy to do it like this as opposed to at the end. Otherwise, if you've got 28 different passes, you've got 28 different things to copy and paste, copy and paste. Easy to do it on the read node. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into edit. This is just the name I gave it because, you know, it's easier. And all you do is change pixel aspect ratio to 2. It's currently 0.5. And then... It'll do that. Bang. And there we have it. So there we have it. And it's it's now working fine. So any um, specular that you have or reflections, you'll have anamorphic flares and stuff like that, you know, going on. Uh, it means you can work in either full uh, uns unsquashed format or the original anamorphic and do all your effects on there and then, which is what I would normally do. But... If you, as I say, if you're dealing with a lot of different passes, this is the way to go. So yeah, it's a fairly sort of simple one, this one, but uh, hopefully it'll give some of you an uh, ultimate way of doing things. Bye.